another thing you want to do is get familiar with the doctors on your floor. If you remember your doctors by name or know how they look, you'll know when you page them what type of attitude you're going to get if they're nice and compliant or if they're mean and grumpy. Um, also, when you're dealing with doctors, hold them accountable. Try your best to make them put in their own orders because they do think they can be a little bully sometimes and like, to, you know, they like to delegate, delegate, but not really do nothing. And of course, it's going to fall back on you. Why did you put in that order? So if you page out to a doctor, if your patient has experienced any acute events, chart it. Anytime I page out to a doctor, I chart what I said to them, what they said back to me and everything. When you page out to them, don't be afraid to talk to them. Let them know what's going on with your patient, what your recommendations is and advocate for your patient. Some of the doctors, they will try to bully you. But if you stay on your ground, they'll learn real quick that they, they'll learn real quick. I don't play that you're going to bully me. Because one thing for sure, you give the orders, I follow them. But one thing you should always remember as a new grad nurse, them people put on their pants just like you put on them, your pants. Them people bleed just like you bleed. I know that's a little gangster, but sometimes you got to get a little gangster with the gangsters. So what I'm saying in other words is don't be afraid to let them know you got me fucked up like <laughs> in the most tactful way remember doctors are your co-workers not your bosses they don't sign your check so you don't have to answer to them you are your own person who operates under a whole total different license than them rules and regulations to what you can do and what you don't want to get caught doing as a new grad nurse is working outside of your scope don't let no doctor get you like that because you agree to the nursing Hold their ass accountable. I know I be a little gangster and I feel like, if, I know I sometimes feel like I'm talking aggressive, but because I want the best for y'all and a lot of new people, they don't know what assertive is, so they let doctors run over them. Only reason why I know how to be assertive with people is because I was in the military, so I'm not going to play this game with you. Like, I learned that at a young age. No, we're not going to do that. I was in military police, so assertive is my middle name and I will get you together. I don't care what MD you got after your name. You're not about to have me doing things that I cannot do. Again, hold everybody accountable. Make sure that they put their own orders in. On my floor, they are really bad. They think you're supposed to do everything. You put the order in, sir. I just follow them. You put the order in. Why am I putting the order in for that? Okay, another thing that's helped me tremendously is keeping my bedside shift report. That on me at all times. Because if you work day shift like I work, you have so many people call you all day. Telly is the feds. They call and report you all day through the flow sheet. The doctors call you, you get calls from an outpatient facility if your patient is having a referral. Like our patients get life vests. So sometimes the life vest people want to come in. You get a lot of calls. Like the phone be metro booming. It's very overstimulating. It's probably the worst part about working a day shift. But I said that to say, keep your shift report on you at all times. I keep mine in my pocket because I remember one time my doctor called. And I think it's because I had paged out to them. And they were calling about a patient. And I had no idea what patient they was talking about. And that's embarrassing. Like, you've been taking care of this patient for 12 hours and you don't even know nothing about your patient. Or one time I had a rapid and my patient, they had a stroke. I've mentioned this multiple times. And we had to take them to ICU Neuro. And I didn't have my shift report on me, my bedside shift report on me. So what happened was I had to go give report to the, the, the nurse that was gonna, we're gonna transition her care to, the ICU nurse. And I just was embarrassed because I didn't really know too much. I feel like as a nurse, I have to do my due diligence and I need to be the most, the person who knows the most about my patient. So when somebody asks me, they know what I'm talking about. Like I'm always a person who is big on being competent about what I'm doing. And when I don't know what's going on, that bothers me. And in that moment, I was like, girl, lesson learned, keep your bedside or shift report on you at all times. So you know what's going on with your patient. I'm telling you, it will save your life. You can always be like, one moment, could you hold and look at this shift report? Oh, okay, this is the patient they're talking about. And put the room number on there. Because a lot of times, they always be like, yeah, the patient at 426. Can you give me a name? Oh. That's how they That's how they refer to, like a, like a prison number. That's how they refer to your patient. Another good tip is to make at least two good friends on your floor. And I said it's because if you got two good friends on your floor, they can help you out with things like when it's time to go to lunch. So on our floor... We have to pass our phone off during those 30 minutes of time that we have to go to lunch so that you can take your whole 30 minutes uninterrupted. So if something's, I don't, if your patient not, the other nurse got to handle it at the time. They make sure that you get your lunch and I think it's a great buddy system, but sometimes it's easier just to go to people that you're more comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they won't be as reluctant to taking your patient or whatever. Um, establish a 
good rapport with your text, your, your CNAs. That is very important. I always try to help my CNAs whenever possible or my texts whenever it's possible. I've never been to tech and you, they say nurses who never been to tech um, are the worst, but I, I, I digress. Like I help them give a bed bath. I would, I would help them clean up a patient if I can. Uh, I'm never too good to get dirty and nitty gritty with them, but as long as they're doing their job. You work hard, I work hard with you. You treat me well, I treat you well back. Um, but there has been some, some times where I had to get a tech together about not wanting to do their job because a lot of times, and it's nothing to get says, but some of them, they know that if something, a task doesn't get done, it's going to fall back on the RN. Because if you take your in class or anything, yeah, that, that is in a tech job description, but if it don't get done and it push come to shove, something goes to court, it's going to fall back on you because you're supposed to delegate that. So the tech sometimes on my eye floor, they like to tell you what they're not going to do. And I, I don't, I don't care who you is. You, we're not about to, you're not about to make my job harder. I just said, I'm very certain. I said expectations. Listen, I'm here to work with you. I'm not working against you. But if you're going to make my job harder, we're going to have some consequences. You're not going to come tell me what you're not going to do. You can take that up with a charge nurse so she can reassign you. I'm not going to get into it with you. You know, I do my and I let them know I do my best to help you because there are some nurses who won't clean up a patient. Oh, no, that's for the tech. I'm not that type of nurse. If I have the time, I'm going to help help my techs out. So when they betray me like that, I feel I, I feel it per, like it's a personal betrayal. Like me, you did me like this. Stop this good report with your text. Love your text. Be cool with your text. One time I had a, a patient being nasty to my tech, and I straight up went in there. I was like, listen, if you're being rude and nasty to them, then it's going to hurt me. They helped me help you. We are all a team. We are collaborating on your care. Can you please just be a little nicer? Because she helps me help you. Listen, if you give me a medication that causes your, that affects the blood pressures, at, i.e. vasodilators, blood pressure medications, diuretics, you better be checking your blood pressure. I don't know when last time that that, that tech took the blood pressure. So me, to be accountable and make sure I'm not dropping my patient too low or um, diuresing them way too much, I always do the blood pressure if the patient is on the blood pressure. Man, if you want to be a smart nurse and use your critical thinking skills, do the blood pressure. It's just, just push the button. It's, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal, babe. Time management, people. Time management is one of the biggest things for new nurses to get under control. Like I said, I got- This shift is very chaotic. It's very overstimulating. It is tough. You are busy all those whole 12 hours. You are on your feet, you are working. I think they should get a differential pay. Um, Cause you do a lot of work, but you earn that them coins that you're about to get. When you first start, now you might want to set a time on how long you're going to be in that patient room, how long, how fast you want to pass those meds. But do this safely because some people be trying to move fast, and then you can make a medical error. Don't be that guy. Do it safely, safely. Because once you get behind, you are behind. Remember, your morning med pass is going to be your heaviest med pass. So once you can get done with that, you're going to be okay. But one little thing happened and you behind all day. Set some time for charting. I have noticed if I try to chart on all my patients, as I do my med pass, I'm drained. So what I do is in the morning after my med pass, I do half of my chart for half of my patients. And then in the afternoon, I do the other half so it doesn't overwhelm me all at once. Okay, another tip that's going to help you greatly is to be tactful i want to actually put the definition of what tactful is because some people a lot of people i work with because most people are civilians they don't understand how you are to be tactful with your difficult patients you are going to experience difficult patients i will make a separate video about how to deal with difficult patient but for now i won't give you down and dirty basically use the acronym act when you're dealing with a difficult patient you want to apologize first correct whatever it is that's wrong and then thank them for allowing you to serve them and care for them i promise you you do that the day will go by quicker and go about your business and then you got no beef with your patient because a lot of times if you just sit there and hit them out and become the therapist you will get down to the nitty gritty of what's going on with that patient like i said always document when you page out to the doctor and always document how they want to resolve the problem that you paged out for a couple of days ago, I had a doctor. I called about my patient who had the low potassium, critical potassium. I called the cardiologist because usually you have potassium, you need a cardiac potassium protocol, which was not on board. So, of course, me trying to be smart, I called the cardiologist, not the primary. He had the nurse to call me back with an attitude. <coughs> Sir, I was like, I just want to know how you want to proceed. The patient's potassium came back 2.8, which is critical. They do not have a cardiac protocol on. 
Um, ain't that something you call primary for? Okay, I just wanted to notify you. Are you gonna put in a potassium protocol? That's all I want to know. The primary, he told me the primary. I said, okay, all right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I'm not gonna go, bye, boy. Like, no. Because I'm gonna treat you like a, a dude that's been in my DMs that tried to play with me. Bye. Get off my line. So, I paged both of the cardiologists in the primary. The responsible doctor eventually got back with me and put the protocol on, ordered the protocol so we could take care of the patient's problem. So, and guess what? I documented that. He told me that that's the primary problem, the primary physician problem. And I put that right in the notes. Like, you're not gonna play with me. What was the delay in me placing that patient's potassium? He was the delay. I did everything that I can do in my scope of practice, keeping them updated, whether that's keeping them updated on if their plan has changed for their care, if they're moving rooms or they're being discharged, if their meds have changed, are they going for a procedure today? This will help you so much. So because I am my biggest critic and I learn from my mistakes, I can be very transparent with you guys. So on like my second day of being on my own, I had a very particular patient. And when I mean particular, I mean difficult. Yeah, she wanted her meds done a certain way. Fuck the mar. She wanted to done how she wanted to do. She wanted cocktails mixed up. Long story short, me and her got along very well. Like because I was keeping her updated, I let her know every time something was going wrong. But because she was so difficult and she had voice to me that she did not <laughs> want another nurse and that she did not want to leave the floor, I withhold some information from her. So they were trying to get her transferred to a med search floor because she wasn't like she wasn't PCU acuity so she had to go and she was just becoming a nuance to the whole floor and I knew this I had her for two days straight so I knew this prior but I didn't tell her to the last minute so learning moment this lady was so upset she, the crazy thing was she I mean she wasn't mad at me she was just mad at the whole situation so she was like I don't want to talk to risk management she bringing up stuff that happened a week ago when they called it I want to talk to Ms. Mitch. I want to talk to the charge nurse because I particularly told them to let me know when they're going to change me and I should know after I just went under a major surgery. I went out to the room. I said, okay, I'll get them for you. Got the charge, everybody. Da da da. They talked to her. So, teaching moment for me. I should have been transparent with that patient and let that patient know the day prior. I should have told her that she was going to move to a different floor. And I think if I had what I told her earlier, she wouldn't have had such a strong response to it. After she talked to the charge nurse and everybody, I went in her room, like on my own accord. Like, cause I realized, okay, that could have been prevented, Brie. You kind of did that cause you were trying to be slick and you didn't want to deal with dealing with her because she's so difficult. And you, and she had already been draining me. Like, you can't break my soul, Beyonce drain, <laughs> draining me. But she loved me at the same time. So I went in there and I used at, you know, and for the first part, I took accountability what I did and I apologized to her and I, t and I told her, I'm sorry, this is my fault. I could have kept you more updated. Because like I said, she had loved me all day because she was like, the one thing I do love about you, that you're, you have been keeping me updated. I would call the doctors in front of her so she knew what's going on. And that's what something in her care that hadn't been addressed. So I kind of dropped the ball on that. So lesson learned, keep your patients updated because it can cause some freaking friction. And do you really want to deal with that? No, you no, you really don't want to deal with that. Just, so just keep them updated. Another thing. And I have a story for this one too. I'm sorry for the stories, but it's just help you guys put it into perspective. Educate your patients. A lot of these people, they don't speak medical. Like you don't come out the vagina as a baby knowing medical terminology. And you don't come out the, the vagina knowing science. These people do not know what you know. They do not have your level of expertise. So you must educate them at all times. So another learning moment for me as a new girl nurse, because I'm very accountable and I like to take accountability for my fuck ups in life. So what happened to me was I had a patient. The patient's, like I said earlier, potassium was critical, 2.8. The patient was also on the Lasix drip. So if you're interested, tell me what's happened if you're on a Lasix drip. What are, what electric lights are being depleted? Could you tell me how the Lasix drip played a part in her potassium below, being, being low? Comment below. So again, this is the same one that I paid out for the doctor. Long story short, she was full. She didn't want to. The potassium is nasty. It looked like an alka -Sessor. They either give it to you alka form or IV. So she didn't want to drink it no more. And so I was telling her, I was like, it came back low. You can go into an arrhythmia because your potassium is low. So we need to replace you every hour. She was like, well, I don't feel like drinking it. I'm full. I can't do nothing. Let me remind you, the lady 
was we had to give her albumin. If you're a nursing student, why do you give albumin? What does albumin do to the fluids in your body? She was super swollen, bilateral, lower legs were swollen. We would give her albumin and give her laces. It may sound contraindicated, but let me know through your critical thinking skills what was going on with this lady. Her EF is 20-25. If you don't know what EF means, go look it up, comment below and tell me what it means and tell me what, did that, what does that say about the patient if their EF is that low? So the patient is heart failure basically with her AEF that I'm going to give you the answer. So we can't, do you want to over floor overload a patient in heart failure? Yes or no? Comment below. I know I'm giving you a lot of pop quizzes, but I want y'all to be thinking like nurses. So what I didn't tell her was, she was like, can we just do an IV? Can you just put it through my vein? The lady had an AC and she had a, a EJ, which is a Turner juggler. It's not like a, um, a, a, a IJ, internal juggler, where it goes straight to the heart. It's just because she was a hard stick. So I was, now the perfect thing for me to do at that time was to educate that lady that it would be easier for you to drink the potassium. I know you feel full, but we need to replace it. It's very critical. It can cause your arrhythmia. It's nasty, but it's easier if you just drink it. Instead, I let my patients learn the hard way. What people don't know is that potassium is very um, damaging to the veins, like burn. When you infuse potassium IV, it will burn the hell out of your veins. So a lot of times, if you were a nice nurse, you would dilute it with normal saline. Because the patient EF is low and she's fluid overload, we don't want to be giving her no extra fluids that she's already getting. She's already on a Lasix drip. So you can go on your Lexi comp and see if Lasix and potassium is compatible and maybe the Lasix could somehow dilute the um, potassium. Tell me if you would have ran it with normal saline's or you would have ran, ran it concurrent with the Lasix. I knew it was going to burn because I had already been like, this is going to burn her. She should have just drunk it. But me... Being a good nurse should have just told her it's going to burn your veins and you will feel it. Just drink it. And I didn't. I let her learn the hard way. Five minutes later, this lady is complaining. Oh my God, it's burning. I was like, yeah, potassium does burn your veins. She's like, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, next time we'll drink it, right? So that was another learning word. Educate your patients. Please just educate them. It will be very much easier if they understand what's going on or what's going on with their body and why this stuff is detrimental to them or how they can do it this way and why you prefer them to do it this way and why you recommend that they do something this way. Last but not least, keep everybody accountable. Keep yourself accountable when you do something wrong. Keep the doctors accountable. Keep the techs accountable. Keep the nurse managers accountable. Keep the team lead accountable. We must keep everybody accountable in the nursing environment. And I think that's what's wrong with nursing overall. Nobody's keeping nobody accountable but the nurse.